Welcome back. Today, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner testified in the biggest hearing so far on this controversial AIG bailout. Uh, at times, Geithner's grilling from a fed up Congress looks straight out of a courtroom drama. You had every opportunity, every opportunity to weigh in on behalf of the American people and make these people take a new deal, make them take a haircut. This question of disclosure was the subject of huge amount of controversy. And most people... You think? It stretches credulity for us to believe that you had no role in this and didn't know anything about it. You were the head of the Fed and you didn't know anything about it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, frustrated lawmakers trying to unravel the mystery, and what a mystery it is, of the so-called backdoor bailout using an email trail of clues. Where are you on the AIG counterparty disclosure issue? Long after you left, you made this email. What was it about and what was the answer? It was a day spent trying to determine two things. One, why the New York Federal Reserve overpaid banks like Goldman Sachs, Society General, and UBS to unwind risky contracts they probably never should have been in. Then President Geithner and the Federal Reserve making the decision, the choice, to pay 100 cents on the dollar, effectively par value, for a series of securities that at the time were worth less than half of that amount. And as we demonstrate in the audit, that was in fact a choice. Hmm. And two, who made the decision to hide the details of the deal just described to us? It was described this way by Brian Bill Bray of California. With the average citizen, when they heard disclosure issue, they hear cover up. Now, why? To that, the theme of the day, it wasn't me. I had no role in making those decisions. I was not involved in decisions about what to disclose about the individual transactions. I had no involvement uh, at all in the, uh, the, the payment to the counterparties. No involvement whatsoever. Heck, even the Fed chairman himself, Ben Bernanke, joined the, quote, not me chorus in a written statement responding to new allegations that he actually overrode staff recommendations not to mark up AIG and pay them in full. <laughs> He said, and I quote, I was not involved in discussions with AIG regarding counterparties or the disclosure matters. With that said, everyone was willing to claim responsibility for saving all of us from certain doom. We acted because the consequences of AIG failing would have been catastrophic to get the best, the best deal for the American taxpayer. Really? All this was done to benefit the American taxpayer? Huh. Apparently, you couldn't save us without Wall Street getting a record $145 billion in bonuses alone, consolidating a financial monopoly for Goldman and J.P. Morgan, and ignoring the hundreds of billions of dollars paid in the 10 years prior, building the Ponzi scheme paid out by the government at the end through AIG. But we'll take him at his word. If Tim Geithner really works for the taxpayer, then I'm sure he'd be willing to recoup some of those ill-gotten gains, past and future, right? Do you think, in view of the fact that much of their profit was made through taxpayer generosity, it would be appropriate to tax bonuses, uh, as I suggest in my legislation? Of course, I would be happy to take a careful look at that legislation and talk to you about how best to deal with that. Uh, you better work quickly, Mr. Secretary. It sounds like uh, you may be running out of time. Why shouldn't we ask for your resignation as Secretary of the Treasury? It is a great privilege to me for me to work with this president to help repair the damage that, that was here when we took office. You're punning the blame, and I think you're trying to position yourself as uh, the same. Congressman, you don't, you don't know me very well. And yet, you, you, don't, you don't know me very well. I believe I will take that we're not getting the whole story. We're getting a lame story. Intense proceedings, to say the least. Great theater. But will anything come of it? Joining us now, the ranking Republican on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, Congressman Darrell Issa. Uh, and Congressman Issa, we welcome you back to the program. Uh, let's run down the list here. Do we figure out who did it and as far as that uh, pass-through is concerned? Who, who made the call to give, up all the, give away all that money, boss? 
Dylan, we may find out that we really have the money just sitting in the Fed because it doesn't look like anyone gave it. it uh, uh, it's very clear that everyone wants to take credit for uh, stopping an apocalyptic event. Well, no one wants to take blame for paying too much. Remember that these were payments that didn't even have to happen. They could have simply put a guarantee in uh, and not had to put a, pay a penny out. So we didn't get all the answers. What we got today was members on the Republican and Democratic side. I'm very proud of both sides asking tough questions and getting promises to have our questions in writing answered, something that hasn't happened before. But today was still about people talking about Wall Street as though it was going to help Main Street. Where do you go from here? You know, we go back to reminding uh, these people in our questions that we're concerned about the fact that Main Street hasn't gotten a bailout, that Wall Street, in fact, was taken care of, and they were taken care of globally. It's not just U.S. Wall Street. Banks in France and other countries around the world were made whole well beyond what was reasonable. Additionally, we released a document with the leadership of Ed Towns uh, that's going to tell people a little bit more of the detail of what's being covered up, uh, and I'm very proud yeah. that we did that as a committee. Uh, you and I both know, and quite honestly, most American voters know, uh, that when it comes to assuming risk at a business, whether it's a, a corner store here in New York where I like to get my hot dogs or uh, the biggest business uh, in, in America, the CEO is the one that decides how much risk that business can take. How many hot dogs am I going to have in inventory? How many Toyotas am I going to keep on the lot? Or how many loans am I willing to care against my balance sheet, right? Absolutely. Why, why is it why is it there's such hesitancy to go back and hold the CEOs of the banks over the past decade and and forward more accountable? I know, I know we're sort of we're, they're getting interrogated, but we're not getting a lot of accountability as far as I can tell. Well, Dylan, there's there's no hesitancy on the committee on either side of the aisle to hold the banks accountable. Right now, though, part of what we're looking at is that when uh, career people said that to uh, bail out AIG and eliminate the moral hazard uh, question that existed at the bank meaning have them not have to pay for their mistakes when in fact they invested in an organization or got insurance from an organization that they didn't have real assets behind. The fact is that Geithner had no answer for that. It, he went right back to, we had to do it because otherwise everything would have collapsed. We're better off because we gave the money away rather than finding other ways. We intend to get the documents that showed that the Fed itself felt that letting AIG go would have been better, but in fact, uh, Chairman Bernanke overruled that. And, you know, that's not what he answered today, but what he's going to have to answer is why did he overrule even having the members of the Fed see that recommendation and give him advice as to whether he should take it. Do you think Geithner should uh, remain on the job? I think if you took a poll, there's not one Republican or Democrat on the dais today that would have confirmed Ted Geith or Tim Geithner based on how he is today. And I suspect on the Senate side, it would be the same thing. So the question of would do, if there was a vote of confidence with the House or the Senate keep him, no. Does the president keep him at his peril? Yes. Because the pe president keeps distancing himself from a person who appears not to have the answers and not to have been where he said he was, uh, but we only find that out now. So that's a decision for the president to make, but it's very clear that his own party doesn't want him to stay. You saw that from Democrats on the dais today, including Marcy Kaptur, who I know is going to be on next, and others. Yeah. They had questions he couldn't answer because he was AWOL, and we only find out now that he, quote, recused himself, uh, and as a yeah. result, we thought he was working when he wasn't. Representative Issa, it is always a pleasure to get a chance to talk with you. We thank you for your efforts on our behalf to get answers uh, to questions that are honestly hard to get answers to. Uh